Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends, this is Gunjan here. Welcome to the 33rd episode of my chess trap. In this episode, I am going to show you one of the beautiful and cunning trap in the Queen's Indian defense from the black perspective. Now the most surprising part is, one of the chess greats, Sigbert Tarash, once fall into this trap. And not only him, time to time, every year, Many strong players are falling into this trap. So if you know this trap from both the side, then it is going to be very helpful for the tournament practice. The opening arises after the following move order, d4, knight to f6. And here it doesn't matter whether white continue with knight to f3 or the move c4. Let's say in this game, Tarash continue with knight to f3 and after the move, e6, white indeed played the move c4, which gives him the space on the queen side. Okay, now comes the typical trademark Queen's Indian move, b6, and we reach to the starting point of this opening. So as you can see, black wants to activate his light square bishop, and accordingly, white has tried different responses. Well, amongst them, knight to c3 and g3 are most frequently played move. However, in this episode, we are going to look at one of the most popular choice by white camp, namely bishop to g5. So idea is very simple. White not only pinned down this knight, but he wants to play e3, so that way his bishop remains outside the pawn chain. Okay, no issues, black continue with bishop to b7, putting that bishop on a lovely long diagonal and accordingly, white liberate his light square bishop with the move e3. Now, next two moves of the black are very important as it sets up the basic platform for the upcoming trap. The first one is very obvious, f6 asking the question to the bishop. And if white decided to grab the knight, then black is more than happy as he is going to capture with the queen. And the net result is black obtain the bishop pair and in a long run, this will indeed give advantage to the black camp. So I don't think so any good white player will do this. And instead of that, white will indeed like to maintain this pain with bishop to h4, which happens in the 90% of the games. Well, so far, both the side has played the logical response. However, now comes the move which sets up a very beautiful trap and that is bishop to b4 check. White has two natural response to block this check. However, after knight to d2, white indeed fall into our beautiful trap. Now before we look knight to d2, the important point I like to mention here that if your opponent continue with knight to c3, then the following forcing sequence gives black a slight advantage and a good attacking position. The first obvious move is g5 attacking the bishop. And after bishop to g3, we are going to pressurize this c3 knight with knight to e4. So white response is force. White has to defend this knight with queen to c2. But then after the move f5, not only black gets space on the king side, but he has a simple plan to execute, namely d6, knight to d7, queen to e7, and then castle on the queen side which not only secure his king, but later on black can look forward for a quick kingside activity, which is not easy to dealt with as a white camp. 
So this is how you should respond if your opponent continue with knight to c3. Okay, it's a trappy time and let's check out what is going on after the move knight b to d2, which is a very natural response as white doesn't want to create a double pawn on the c file. In fact, in the database, there are more than 60 games goes into this direction where I feel very sorry for the white cam as it directly fall into our beautiful trap. Now, before I move on, I like you to pause this video and find out a sequence where black instantly obtain a winning advantage. Are you ready? Let's get started. The first move is very obvious. G5, attacking the bishop. Bishop goes to the only square, g3. And after that, I hope you find this deciding move. g4, dislodging this knight, which is a defender of the d2 knight. And now it doesn't matter whether white continue with knight to e5 or a3. It all leads to completely losing position for the white camp. Number one, if white try to move the knight, let's say knight to e5, then the simplest response is knight to e4. And now you can see the pitiable thing for this spin knight. He needs support, right? But nobody is helping him. More or less, at this point, white is a piece down. And the best he can do is grab a pawn. But this is not going to help. As after bishop captures d2, king to d1, and the move queen to g5, black emerged with a clear piece up, and white has absolutely no compensation for it. Well, in the game, Tarash realized at this point that he is going to lose a piece, so he decided to counterattack the black bishop with the move a3. So his idea is, if now black capture on d2, then white will recapture with his knight, and white is no longer in trouble. But what he missed out is, after the move, g captures f3, pawn captures b4, and the move f captures g2. Again, white is losing a piece in a broad daylight. And even Tarash continue with few moves, at the end, he has to resign in mere 28 moves. That's it guys. I hope you enjoy and learn this beautiful trap in the Queen's Indian defense. Remember, once your opponent play the move knight to d2, the lost is written on his head on the spot. Well, thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment and I will meet you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care.